said earlier. Thank you. I'll uh, write it down. Mike, how's it going? Good. How you doing, Dad? I'm doing well. I'm glad we finally made this connection. Uh, it's funny because uh, Nikki said, oh, you have to talk to my friend Mike. He absolutely will want to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. So uh, you're running for Congress? I am. Sixth District. John Tierney and uh, Richard Tissé? Yep. John Tierney is the incumbent. Uh, eight terms. Richard Tissé is uh, 20 years in the uh, Massachusetts State House. Both essentially professional politicians. Why should people vote for you over them? At this point in time, we have become a country that is ruled by professional politicians, and professional politicians get elected by accepting corporate money. I am essentially funding my own campaign. I am only taking donations from individual people, no political action committees, no uh, corporate sponsors. As a result, I am beholden to the people. I'm running not because I want the job. I'm running because I'm afraid of what's happening to our country. And maybe the best thing we can hope for is to elect somebody who doesn't want the job, who doesn't want the power, but somebody who is willing to serve. And that's me. I am willing to serve. Awesome. And uh, some of the issues like uh, NDAA. National know, Defense Authorization Act, the suspension of habeas corpus, that is so fundamentally against what our country is about. Right to a free trial, right to an attorney, those things all have to be protected. And the fact that in the name of terrorism, they would say, oh, we absolutely have to suspend this to keep the country safe. The country is not safer because they're willing to lock you up because you visited a uh, terrorist website. You know, there are some people who innocently go to a variety of different websites because they want to see opposing views. The fact that the government says, oh, well, this website is dangerous, does that make you a criminal? Does that give them the right to lock you up? And worse, if it gave you the right to lock you up, does that mean you have the right to no attorney that they can hold you indefinitely? That's got to change. Uh, another thing that I really believe, spending is out of control at this point in time. You know, I respect the fact that the Democrats want to spend more on the country, but they need to recognize the fact that the Republicans are not going to let them raise taxes. And so if they can't raise taxes, they shouldn't borrow money to spend. You can argue about whether Republicans are right or Democrats are right. I personally would argue that they're both wrong at this point in time. But something that everybody can understand is that if the money isn't there, we should not be spending it. We should not be borrowing it. Interest on the debt this year is $450 billion. It's almost as big as entitlements. It's almost as big as defense. And if we keep borrowing money, it's going to be bigger than all of that stuff. We can live within our means. Every person in this country does it every single day. We have budgets. We understand them. Congress needs to work the same way. Awesome. And um, a couple other uh Pertinent question. Question three, medical marijuana, you support that, I'm sure? Absolutely support it. I am a big favor of H.R. 2306, which supports ending the prohibition on cannabis. Uh, Ron Paul and Barney Frank are sponsors. Wide bar bipartisan support. At this point in time, it's clear that most people in the country do not think that smoking marijuana in the privacy of your house is a public threat. It's clear that people think that there is value to a hemp economy. It's clear that we can do a lot of things to say, <coughs> excuse me, it's clear that we can recognize drug laws are not being enforced in a fair manner at this point in time. Uh, I think 40% of the people who are in jail, are in jail right now are in jail for private, uh, for small marijuana offenses. And the number one people, person, number one industry against uh, ending the prohibition of marijuana is the private prison industry. They know that these people who won't be in jail, they will be out of work. It's ridiculous at this point in time. The nanny state has gotten so out of control in terms of saying what we can and cannot do. We can end the prohibition on marijuana and not change anything in terms of our public safety and increase our economy significantly. Awesome. And uh, one more last question. Uh, Richard Tissay is was complaining that uh, Tierney had scheduled some debates with him. Yep. And now won't I'm in them as well. Well, that's my question. Are you in the debates? I'm in all four uh, the debates. debates on, when, when are the debates coming? Uh, the first one that's coming up is next Thursday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, one of the things that, of course, is interesting, the difference between me and the other two candidates, I still work for a living, so I'm going to have to take a day off of work, but I don't mind doing it. I'm happy to do it because I'm willing to serve. But 3 p.m. at uh, North Shore Community College, Lynn Campus, there will be the first debate. We're debating the American Dream. There's three debates after that, Salem News, uh, Salem News Jewish Journal debate, Merrimack Chamber of Commerce and the Cape Ann Cham Chamber of Commerce. Not sure the exact dates of them, but if you go to my website, www.fishmanforcongress.com, uh, under the press releases, there's a list of all the debates, times, and locations. And anybody who wants to go, anybody who wants to show up and carry a sign, I have signs available for people. You can contact me via the email, 
on the website, or there's a Facebook page as well. Excellent. We'll get some people off of them. That would be awesome. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for running, Dan. Thanks, Mike. Thank you for all you're doing. Thanks.